So me and the boys right here, we got this guy. That's Tanner Burns with full draw taxidermy. And he's gonna come out here and he's gonna, he's gonna flay his turkey up we got right here to show you guys how to basically prep your turkey if you're on the road or if you're flying. When you get done doing what he's gonna show you how to do, you'll be able to take this turkey, flay it off its body and have just the hide, just the skin essentially, detach his tail, all that kind of cool stuff. And then you can send it to him and he can mount that bad boy for you and it'll look like it was right before you went to touching off on him. And uh, you ain't gotta worry about flying back with the whole turkey and all that kind of jazz. So kind of out here in the woods. So gonna kind of be pretty uh, representative of what you're gonna have when you uh, at the camp or whatever. So hopefully this is uh, pretty helpful for some of y'all. So we'll see how it turns out. All right, guys, uh, I'm Tanner Burns, Full Draw Taxidermy in Buckhannon, West Virginia. We're gonna show you how to prep a turkey for a mount if you're on the road or if you ever need to mail one to us. So a good turkey mount really starts as soon as the gun goes off. So if you're on a trip for Osceola's or Rio's and you know you're getting the bird mounted, uh, I would follow these steps. So as soon as, as soon as you get to the turkey, and you know they flop most of the time, it's best to grab him by the head and make sure you don't get any of his neck feathers when you grab him and hold him out from your body uh, while he flops until he's done. That just keeps him from beating himself up on the ground. I know a lot of people like to grab him by the legs, uh, which is fine, but when you grab them by the legs, most of the time they start twisting around and you're gonna have to drop them and then they're beating themselves up again. So if you can, get to them as quick as you can if you know you're gonna mount them uh, and grab them by the head till they're done flopping. That'll save them from beating themselves up. Uh, you're going to need just a few simple tools while you're doing it on the road, stuff that everybody usually already has in their vest. You're just going to need a sharp knife. I would recommend something with a replacement blade. Your clippers out of your vest. I know these aren't clippers, these are just kind of bone scissors, but these will work too, just to clip through some joints and some bones. Uh, you're going to need some Ziplocs, and another thing you're going to need is something to hang them up with. Now, you could use paracord or whatever. I think I got this off Amazon. It's just an old tail stripper. It's got some hooks to hang their legs on, but I always just hang them, find a good tree, clip you off some limbs, and hang them from that. So that's really the only tools you're going to need as far as prepping them and skinning them. So we'll get this thing hung up, and we'll show you guys how to do it. Uh, first thing, if you've never skinned one of these before, uh, it's going to take some finesse with your knife because these things, their skin is really thin, so it's like skin and paper. So when you go to skin it, don't hold your knife like you're getting ready to cut a steak. I would hold it more like a pencil. That's going to give you a lot more control, and you're always going to be using your left hand to, uh, to pull skin, which we'll talk about here in a second. Uh, but anyway, things that people don't realize when you're skinning a turkey, the legs come off, the head comes off, and the tail comes off. So we'll go over how to, uh, how to cut the head off now. When you go to cut the head off at the feather line, it doesn't have to be precise. Just where the feathers meet the head, just take your knife if it's good and sharp, go right around the base of the wattles. Again, this bird is wet, uh, so he's not the prettiest, but it's not a big deal. If your turkey gets wet, you can still mount him. When you really have to start worrying about your mount when you start losing feathers. If he gets wet, no big deal. If he starts losing feathers, that's stuff you can't fix. So even though he's not the prettiest, he still got everything he needs to have here to get a mount done. So that's it. So I just got it detached all the way around. He's gonna lose some blood when you do this. Uh, once you get it detached at the feather line, just take your clippers that you keep in your vest, with these scissors, um, and go ahead and snip his head off there. Uh, even if you're not gonna mount your bird, you should still keep the heads. These things are worth 10 or 15 bucks to a taxidermist. If you kill, you know, you a dozen turkeys uh, every spring, that's an out-of-state license, just in frozen heads. All you'd have to do is mail it to the taxidermist. Uh, they'll give you the money for it. So. Next thing uh, is taking the tail off. So the tail, uh, you got your rump feathers on the back, so that's where I like to start. You want to start right at the base of these rump feathers on the back of his tail. So you're right above his, his vent, and you're going to come up here right to the base of his tail feathers here in the back. And I'm pulling with my left hand and just holding my knife like a pencil. And I'm just taking these rump feathers up just a little bit to expose that knob right there. And this thing's on a joint, so you'll see it move around a little bit. And that's the only cut you're going to make on the back. You just want to fold those rump feathers back just a little bit. Okay, and then you're going to come around to the front of it. And you're going to leave that first track of feathers there. So you got your tail fan, then you got that first track of feathers. You're going to take your left hand, fold those down. And you're just going to come down and cut straight down just a little bit, just enough to loosen the skin up and get that tail off. So I'm pulling with my left hand, coming down, come all the way around on each side. Now my tail fan, all the skin is completely off of it. Okay, I got my rump fan detached. Now you can go ahead and clip 
your tail fan right at that joint. So this is what your tail fan should look like. Got your first row of feathers, turn it over, you got your rump feathers. All I did was snip them at that bone, that ball joint on, on the back of the bird that lets his tail fan rotate and do all that. Um, so you just cut straight down there, cut back to the rump feathers, come across, simple as that. All right guys, so next thing we're gonna do is work on getting the skin off. So we detach the head, detach the tail. All right, so what we're gonna do to get started, it's almost like your case skin in a fox or a bobcat or whatever. You're gonna come around his drumsticks and make a circle on each drumstick. So you're gonna just ring it around the base of the drumstick on each side. Then you're just gonna make a cut connecting the two in between his legs, all right? So I like to just take my left hand, fold his uh, thigh patch down like this. You'll see a spot where the thigh patch separates from the, from the thighs. And you just take your knife, make you a nice circle. Now in here, you're not gonna be able to see very much. You can take one leg loose if you need to, but um, you're basically just running your knife right along the base of that. Come to the back, make sure you got it ringed all the way around. Now you're gonna go to the other leg, fold his thigh patch down. Now I'm gonna ring it all the way around the base of it and you'll feel it start to loosen up there. And remember, I'm always keeping tension with my left hand. So at this point, I've got it ringed almost all the way around. There's probably a little bit still attached in there. Uh, now I make my cut coming over for the two to meet. So just come straight across and you should see that you start to get a seam right there. So I just came right across from here. Now I'm gonna work everything down. Now the tricky part to this um, is getting it to break down over the back here. So you're gonna have to come in between his legs. What I like to do is take my left hand right here and keep tension on it. Keep tension with my left hand coming around right here. And you're gonna cut some holes in them, guys. That's just the nature of it. I'm probably gonna cut some holes in it because they're so thin. But a turkey's got so much, fe so many feathers, a little hole does not make a big deal uh, when it comes to the mount. So I'm working it down around the back, just keeping tension on all the skin. Now I'm about to get it to break down over his back, coming around the side. And you'll feel his, his tailbone right here. This is the trickiest part to the whole thing, is getting it to break down over the back. Once you get it to break down over this back right here, you're in good shape. So see how I'm starting to get it to break down over? You're probably gonna to wanna to move a lot slower than me. So I just got to his vent right here. I'm cutting through it. I just cut a little pinhole right there. Not a big deal. And you can even work it around the side as you get back to there. Now, you're gonna get up here and you're gonna think that you cut a hole, but remember, you're gonna hit that hole that where you cut the tail fan off. So, uh, when you start to see that, which is what you're starting to see right there where I'm breaking it down over, it's not a big deal when you, when you see that hole right there. So I've almost got it broke down over the back, work it down over this side a little more. Try not to cut you any holes. I'm hitting that hole where my tail fan was. I'm just keeping tension with my left hand, working it down over. Now, once you get to this point, it'll almost skin itself. You can just pull and it'll just keep coming down here. I'm gonna get rid of my knife right here. Make sure you don't pull a big hole in it. Just working it down, come around to the front, catch up with your back, working down off the breastbone work him down off the sides. Come around to this side. All right, so now I'm getting to the point where I'm about to hit his wing joints. I'm gonna get the other side caught up so we're at the same spot, coming down. 
All right, guys, so we filleted him all the way down. We just brought the skin straight down from those cuts. We just got to his wing joints. You'll feel his wing with your left hand, and you'll see that joint in there. So I like to take my left hand and keep a little bit of tension and cut straight in where that thing meets, and you'll see that ball joint pop. Now just cut on the other side of that ball joint. Don't go in very deep because you end up cutting skin. So just go real gentle, get all that skin loose. All right, that wing's loose right there. Come around to the other side. Let's get it down just a little bit so we can see the wing joint a little bit better. Feel the wing joint with my left hand. Cut in, wing joint pops. Get some of that meat off of it just on the other side. Be real careful so you're not cutting through the skin. You see how this turkey's got little bitty pinholes in it where I'm skinning, that's gonna happen to everybody. Uh, and like I said, it's not a big deal. It's really, uh, you can't avoid it when you're skinning these things. Okay, so I got the wing joints detached. You see the ball right here. Um, so we actually use the wing bones in the mount. We use the leg bones too. Uh, but now it's just a matter of working it the rest of the way down. Working him down on this side. At this point, uh, this bird uh, has been frozen, so he's not gonna lose a lot of blood. But if, you just, are you skin, if you're skinning this turkey the same day you killed it, when you get to this point, he's going to start losing some blood, which you really don't want to get on the feathers. It's not a big deal. You just want to keep them as clean as you can. Uh, so it'd be a good idea to have some paper towels at this point. And I just like to take a paper towel and just wrap it around this part of the breast and that'll keep him from losing blood. And you could have done the same thing down at the head too, uh, wrap a paper towel around it. So we're almost to that point where we can just pull it with our hands. Just coming all the way down. Now he's to the point where I can just pull him the rest of the way off. So now your cape is completely detached. You can fold everything inside out. We'll lay him here. Remember this thing got wet, so he's not the prettiest. We still get the idea. So we got a cape right there. All right guys, next thing we gotta get off here is his legs. So at this point, I like to loosen one of them up or both of them. When you get to this leg bone, there's a little, a little indention here where that joint is um, that separates the drumstick and the thigh. You're gonna wanna cut straight down through there, through that joint. And if you need to use your clippers to get rid of some of these tendons on the back part, you can. Do the same thing with your other leg. Find that high point, cut down through it. Use your clippers if you have to. So now we got everything completely detached. At this point, you would wanna take your breast meat off, your thigh meat off, uh, put that in a Ziploc baggie. And we're gonna show you how to pack this turkey up to store him in your cooler. So I just got the cape spread open right here uh, with his back down. So if you have saran wrap, we don't have any saran wrap at the moment, it'd be a good idea to wrap your tail and your legs in saran wrap. If you don't have any saran wrap, it's not a big deal. Anyway, you just want to take the tail, lay it right here, take his legs, lay it on each side of him, fold his wings completely in like that. That'll keep everything kind of nice and compact. If you got another trash bag, just go ahead and lay him down in there flat. I just like to get everything out of it, all the air out of it. And I'm gonna roll him up. Make it nice and as compact as I can. Now after you get him rolled up like this, you can even take some tape, some masking tape or some painter's tape like I have right here. Roll it around it. This makes it even more compact. Okay guys, after you cut your uh, turkey head off and whether you are using it for a mount or you're just saving them to sell, just get them in a Ziploc bag, uh, seal up your Ziploc, wrap them up as tight as you can. Uh, if you wanna store it with your cape uh, and with your tail, you could have put it uh, inside the trash bag with it, or you can just keep it separate. Just make sure you keep track of the head 
Uh, that way we can make sure that we get the right freeze dried head with the right case. Once you get it to this point, you're ready to drop it in your cooler. If you drove uh, out west or on a trip, this thing will keep in a cooler like this for a week and a half, two weeks uh, at least, as long as you keep good ice on it. If you're flying, uh, this thing will fit right in your suitcase, whether it's frozen or just out of the cooler. Uh, it should be fine in your suitcase for a couple hours when you fly back. I've flown with a lot of them. It's not a big deal to put them in like that. Uh, also, if you want to ship them to us like this, frozen, this is a lot easier than shipping the whole bird with his breast and, and everything inside of him. Uh, but this is basically all you'll have right here. If you have any questions, uh, you can message us. We're on Facebook, Full Draw Taxidermy. Instagram, Full Draw Taxidermy. Our phone number's on there. You can call us with any questions. Uh, good luck this spring.